So today we are going to learn a flash photolysis technique. Even we can use in studies of photochemical processes. As in photochemical processes, there is a formation of intermediates like singlet and triplet. So to understand the quantity of singlet and triplet generated, we can use flash photolysis technique. It is developed by Norrish and Porter. In this technique, the concentration of intermediates are generated using strong flash light, which is easily analyzed by spectroscopic method. In this particular reaction system, actually this is a, a reaction system where the reactions are taking place even it is called cell it is subjected to a high intensity flash this flash is generated from this particular tube and the reaction is monitored by using single beam absorption spectroscopy so it is somewhat like colorimetry uh, instrument so this this is a single beam absorption spectroscopy is used actually this is a secondary light this is a primary flash light using this primary flash light the reaction is carried out in this reaction vessel and the concentration of intermediates are generated or reaction is carried out is measured by using this secondary light generated uh, whose the monitoring flash is directed this is generally applied perpendicular to uh, a photo flash the light from monitoring flash this is passed through a reaction cell and then it is passed through a spectrograph uh, the absorption spectra so using spectrograph we get absorption spectra this gives a concentration of intermediate formed and using this we can uh, learn the quantity of intermediate formed during this process this method is called flash photolysis the duration of photolytic flash is set to 1 to 10 microsecond so the flash generated by this photo flash is just within 1 to 10 microsecond and it produces a very high intense light of the energy around 20 to 2000 joules within 1 to 100 microseconds. And this is a flash photolysis method which commonly we used in photochemical studies. Already we have discussed flash photolysis. And in flash photolysis, we need a light which produces high intensity. But to generate high intense light, we need high power. Now to overcome this, we can use a laser light. As we know, the laser will produce more coherent light. So in, the, in present days, to increase the intensity of uh, photolytic flash, Q-switched laser is used. Uh, the this laser is very special source of light which is ex which has extremely narrow line width and it forms a collimated and coherent light and it emits a light with a power of 10 raised to 19 watt per cm square within 10 raised to minus 12 second that is within picoseconds so generally the laser if he wants to work that is the condition for laser action is there should be a creation of population inversion population in inversion means normally after absorbing radiation when the molecule gets excited there should be a difference between the number of molecule is in excited state and the ground state if both the numbers are equal then it doesn't support this population inversion concept now to uh, just to get the difference in a number of molecule in excited and ground state we have to consider more than two energy levels so we are going to learn in two different examples one is ruby laser another is helium neon laser so let us see the ruby laser ruby laser contain chromium plus 3 ion doped in air to o3 matrix and it contains three energy levels e1 e2 e3 e1 is lower energy compared to E2 than E3. So when a photon or the light of frequency nu h nu13 is incident on the system then the large number of molecules or ions or atoms will promote that is it gets excited from E1 to E3. 
this energy state e3 it has a short lifetime so quickly these atoms or ions will shift to a slight lower energy orbital e2 by non radiation transition which this state is a long lived metastable state and later on they return from e2 to e1 is generally forbidden and this supports population at e2 attains high value than that of e1 and it achieves population inversion the radiation of energy h nu 1 3 so the energy difference between these two energy level e1 and e3 is called pump radiation and the radiation uh, is emitted when the atoms or ions moves from e2 to e1 that is the radiation emitted with the energy h nu 1 2 it is called laser radiation the lasing condition is generally is very easy to achieve if the final stage is not a ground state so actually in the ruby laser the final stage that is after emitting radiation the atoms or ions is coming to a ground state but for a better and for easiest way always it is prefer that final state should not be a ground state and for that we will consider a second example that is helium neon laser helium neon laser contains four energy states ruby laser contains three energy state helium neon contains four energy states e1 e2 e3 e4 e1 is having lower energy than e2 then e3 and then e4 initially the light of frequency nu 14 the energy gap is between e1 to e4 is supplied to the system then initially after absorbing the energy the absorbing species will excite from e1 to e4 e4 is unstable so the atoms or molecule molecules or ions will relax from e4 to e3 which is again non radiative process and then it emits a laser light during the transition from e3 to e2 finally it returns to a ground state even with non radiative process so that means in ruby laser the light is absorbed atoms or ions or that active species will jumps to e3 e3 to e2 non radiative process e2 to even there is a emission of laser light and in case of helium neon after absorbing radiation the molecular ion jumps to e1 to e4 e4 to e3 non radiative process means light is not emitted e3 to e2 two transition emits a laser light and e2 to e1 again there is non radiative process why we prefer to go with laser because very less power is required to stimulate laser action and here pumping and lasing energy belongs to a two different atoms or molecules so during this process light is generated now our job is to amplify because we want high intense light so to get this high intense light we need to amplify the light so to amplify the intensity of coherent emitted radiation which is made by stimulated further generally ruby laser so this is a diagram rough diagram of ruby laser so this ruby laser it consists of ruby rod and which is surrounded with or which is circulated with uh, excitation lamp which is fixed a parallel to it at the end of the cavity at the end of this there are two mirrors one is totally reflected mirror and another is partially transmitted mirror using this excitation lamp it helps to pumps the lacing material and causes population inversion some of the photons then moves in a form along the mirror and stimulate emission of more photons from excited material during each trip on oscillation is set up so because of that molecules are generated and it starts oscillating within these two mirrors so an oscillation is set up and the intensity of a beam increases 
on each strip some energy pass out see this is a partially transmitted mirror this is a totally reflected mirror so the light which is generated is gone oscillating within this two mirrors and since this is a partially transmitted mirror so during each trip some of the light is pass out of this cavity through partially transparent mirror nowadays we are using a q switching technique so this is a q switch which is generally used which is placed in a path between the two mirrors which is made by optically blocked with a bleachable dye cell or pocket cell this particular q switch will prevent the oscillations within a cavity and al allows a relevant energy states to be populated such in excess of lacing threshold the switch is then open this is just open temporary allowing emission of high intense pulse of within nano second duration the frequency of doubling process is also used to generate a laser with suitable wavelength generally potassium dihydrogen phosphate is used to generate 694 nanometer to 347 nanometer wavelength and neodymium glass laser is used to generate 265 nanometer wavelength thank you